Hey guys, welcome to our top five mile railroad stories of 2023. Uh, it's been quite a year again. Uh, there's been a lot of new products, a lot of interesting stuff being released. So uh, I figured like last year, we'll just do another video for this year, uh, narrow it down to five topics that I think probably are the biggest stories of the year. So what's number one? Well, you'll just have to wait till the end of the video to find out. So without further ado, Let's get started counting down the top five mile railroad stories of 2023. Number five, Marklin releases the Flying Scotsman and announces the ES44AC. All right, so our number five story is Marklin releases the Flying Scotsman and the ES44AC. Now with the Flying Scotsman, uh, that steam engine is celebrating its 100th anniversary. Uh, so to, I guess, kind of mark the occasion, uh, for Marklin to kind of mark, uh, mark the occasion, um, they released a, an HO model three rail version. And they also, I believe have a two rail version, uh, uh, from their, uh, Trix brand, uh, also out. But, uh, uh, that's a really interesting thing that they, that they've uh, come out with very nice looking engine. Uh, Anthony Dodge has one. I saw uh, Hover Motion also has a uh, review out on on it as well. So uh, I'll make sure to put a link into both those channels, um, uh, both Anthony Dodge's and Hover Motion's uh, channels uh, in the description, so you guys can check those out. Uh, but yeah, really cool steam engine there. Uh, it's it's got a lot of really nice features. Of course, it's got the smoke, it's got sound, it's got all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, so yeah, like I said, just a really neat engine and, you know, kind of commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Flying Scotsman, uh, steam engine. Um, yeah, just a kind of an international celebrity engine. Of course, uh, a lot of people may remember 1969, uh, that engine came over to the U S and ran. So, um, uh, there's actually, I believe there's still videos of it on YouTube. Uh, I remember seeing one recently um on youtube so uh i'm sure they're i'm sure they're still up if you, for you guys to go check out but uh, yeah a really cool thing that markland's doing and another really cool thing they're doing is um uh, they're uh, releasing an es44 ac um which is going to be a really cool deal uh, i know a lot of people kind of roll their eyes and say yeah well everybody makes a jivo but we haven't seen a jivo quite like this made by a german company um, I was just looking up some of the features on this engine. Uh, it's going to have smoke. Uh, it's going to have uh, digital controlled lighting, uh, which uh, in the cab, and then what they call long distance lighting, which would actually be the headlights and the ditch lights. Um, so that's that's going to be really cool. But the big thing is is the di uh, the uh, smoke generator with uh, with the uh, dynamic exhaust. Uh, where when you rev the prime mover up, it'll actually uh, change the way the smoke comes out of the engine, which is a really cool feature, makes it very realistic. And also, I did see this as well. Uh, with the UP engine, um, I don't know if they're going to do this with the Kansas City Southern, because that's the other road name they're uh, offering. But um, I did see with the UP engine, there's going to be a corresponding 12-car coal, uh, coal hopper set um, that you could purchase separately to go with that engine. So that's going to be a really cool deal. Um, uh, going to be very interesting. I, I, I'm interested to see some reviews on that engine eventually, uh, uh, when those come out, I may search around, see if, uh, see if I'm finding reviews on that, but, uh, that's going to be a really cool thing. But yeah, a really big story in 2023, of course, the, uh, our fifth, Number five on the uh, top five mile road stories, um, Marklin releasing the Flying Scotsman for the 100th anniversary of that steam engine, and also an ES44 AC with coal cars for the UP version. Again, I don't really know if they're doing something similar to that for the KCS engine or not. I'll have to kind of dig that up uh, when I look that up. But yeah, that's our fifth, uh, number five on the top five stories of 2023. So uh, let's go ahead and jump to number four on the list. 
Number four, Scale Trains announces the museum quality SD45X. Okay, so our number four story is going to be Scale Trains releases their next museum quality engine, and it's the SD45X. Uh, this is quite a wild prototype. I mean, uh, um, I believe there were only like seven of these built. Uh, if I remember, if I read the info correctly, if not, somebody can correct me on that. But uh, yeah, they. Uh, uh, for such a limited production prototype model, uh, it's pretty wild. We're actually getting one of these in plastic now. I believe there's been some brass. Uh, there's a brass version out there, but uh, uh, for scale trains to tackle this project uh, and do it in plastic, it's it's quite a deal. And I've looked at some pre-production models online, um, and these things look really good. I mean, for and for those who don't know what the SD45X is, it's basically the last and the baddest of the SD45s. It's uh, It's got uh, uh, rolled out of the factory with 4,200 horsepower. Um, and it's distinguishable. It's, a, it's much longer than the SD45. And it has, if you look on the back, it has four rooftop cooling fans instead of the usual three. So... Uh, it's it's quite a quite a unique engine, um, and this scale trains model is just going to be right in line with that because it's going to have lighting gauges, walkway lights, uh, working beacons as per the prototype. Um, uh, the SP versions will have uh, functioning gyro lights on the nose. Um, yeah, it's just going to be a wild wild deal. Um, uh, that's kind of one of the engines that's on my hit list for next year. Um, uh, we'll kind of see how things go, see if I actually get it. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, it looks like they're selling out really quickly. I looked on their website, and uh, uh, the, all the non-sound versions are gone already. They're already sold out. Uh, there's still chances to order those with sound and DCC, so... Um, so yeah, if you want one, uh, better get on it. So, uh, in fact, I, I'll admit it, I took a chance and pre-ordered it. Uh, we'll, like I said, we'll see how things goes, uh, this next year, see what happens. But, uh, uh, hopefully I'll still be able to get that engine when it rolls in. At least I'll have plenty of time to actually save up for it, uh, if need be. So, as long as I don't get weak in the knees and try to order anything else so uh, yeah we we may be a little thin on the locomotive reviews next year so uh, um, so yeah but uh, anyway uh, like I said really cool engine scale train is doing uh, I think I mentioned this before but it's going to have uh, uh, functioning uh, class lights rotary beacon um, of course, I've mentioned the nose gyro light will have functioning gyro light, and it'll have lighted gauges as well, as well as walkway lights and everything. So, uh, so yeah, this thing is really going to be something. Um, and for those that might be curious what I pre-ordered, I pre-ordered the EMD version with the SP light package because, hey, the more lights, the merrier. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a really cool, really cool looking engine. So, um, yeah, re really... Uh, really excited so um uh it's it's gonna be something different so um uh we'll we'll see how things plays out with that engine but uh yeah big announcement from scale trains in 2023 the announcement of the sd45 uh the emd sd45x yeah that's uh that's that's gonna be something to see so yeah that's our number four story let's take a look at number three on the list, which ironically also involves scale trains. So here we go. Number three, scale trains purchases exact rail. Okay, so our number three story is scale trains buys exact rail. So this is kind of an interesting uh, thing that uh, really I don't think a lot of people saw coming, much like the Fox Valley acquisition uh, last year. Um, so what happened is, uh, and I believe this is connected to the uh, Train Life closing, because uh, uh, which is the online brick and mortar store. Uh, uh, I read that both Train Life and Exact Rail um, were owned by the same uh, same people or person. 
Um, so, um, yeah, that was, that was kind of a, kind of an interesting, uh, uh, series of events that happened because, uh, um, you know, scale train just continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Uh, they keep adding new stuff. They keep, uh, buying out these smaller companies. It's, uh, uh, either going out or, uh, or, or change, um, uh, the people that own them are moving in a different direction and whatnot. But, uh, um, so it's, it's very, very interesting, uh, to see how this is all going to play out. Uh, we, they, of course, when they acquired exact rail, all the stuff that was already made by them wound up in the scale trains, uh, website. So what exact rail had in stock moved over to that website. Um, I mean the scale trains website. Um, and then now we're starting to kind of get trickling out of the, uh, of models that are post uh, scale trains purchasing exact rails. So uh, uh, it's very, very nice and very interesting too that the cars are going to continue to use uh, KD couplers as opposed to using the scale trains river counter couplers. Now I use both couplers. Uh, I've had no issues with them. Um, I know a lot of people prefer KDs over the river counter couplers, but like I said, you know, I've had no issues and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, um, so yeah, but um, uh, this this has been quite an interesting few years for scale trains. Of course, it all started with the acquisition of the uh, HO scale uh, and S scale tooling from MTH, and we were kind of already getting some uh, rolling stock out of the out of those um, from that end of the uh, purchase. Um, we got, I think, uh, of course, we got the caboose in HO scale to kick. Uh, uh, the kick classics caboose, um, that, uh, you saw me, uh, review here a while back. Um, I believe they've also got a PS1 box car. There's a hopper car, and I believe there's also a gondola car, um, as well. There are XMTH tooling that are in the kick classics line. Uh, of course, uh, last year we were, we did the story on, uh, scale trains buying Fox Valley models. Uh, some of the N scale stuff has been released, uh, namely the uh, Gevos, the S forty fours in N scale. I believe they also uh, released some of the uh, uh, some coal cars also in N scale uh, from the Fox Valley tooling. So, um, and I think there's also a couple of HO pieces as well that's in there. And I have to go back on their website and look, and I'll make sure to try to put that in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, that's, that's, it's been a real crazy three years for scale trains. Uh, um, just, just seeing how that company has blown up in the past, <clears throat> um, what, since 2017. So we're what, this is going to be 2024. So do the math seven years, I mean, 2017 to now. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's been really, really interesting to see how this all, uh, has played out. So, uh, now there's a lot of questions with this exact rail, uh, tooling as well as the other two, uh, the other two brands of Fox Valley and, um, um, MTH, the XMTH HO and S scale tooling, um, do they eventually mold all that into one brand? Uh, we know for at least a foreseeable, foreseeable future, um, the, the real, the names will stay independent. Uh, they'll, the names will still exist is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so you'll have your exact rail line, you'll have a Fox Valley line, uh, what that eventually consists of, whether that means the return of the GP 60 M and GP 60 B and the, and the standard cab GP 60, uh, out of those toolings, uh, We'll have to wait and see. Um, then you have the uh, MTH, uh, HO, and S scale tooling, which we're getting stuff trickling out from that from that uh, tooling. Um, so, and then you have on top of that the scale trains operator, river counter, and museum quality stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's it's really going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out in the next five or ten years. But um, but yeah, 
That's our number three story. Scale Trains purchases exact rail. We'll have to wait and see what happens. So that's number three story. Let's go to number two. Number two, MTH and Atlas announce a shared tooling assets deal. Okay, so our number two story is Atlas and MTH announce a shared tooling assets agreement. So, and before we go any further, yes, MTH still exists as an independent company. They basically sold off everything except for their, I believe it's their Premier Line steam locomotives, uh, which is, uh, which the kind of, the remnants of MTH is now operated uh, by uh, by a group that was, uh, I believe, associated with Mike Wolf, the original, uh, the founder of MTH. So, uh, so yes, MTH is still in existence, and they have now announced a shared tooling asset deal with uh, At Atlas Mall Railroad Company. Of course, some of you may know Atlas acquired. Uh, I believe it's the uh, modern O scale and rolling stock tooling from MTH. So um, uh, last uh, back in 2021. So um, so that's uh, that's yeah, that's kind of an expansion on that whole deal. But uh, basically, how this is going to work is um, products produced to uh, complement another company's product will be branded in the latter's name. So let's say uh, MTH produces, uh, and now this is according to the website, the MTH website, so you can go uh, look it up. Um, so, uh, but uh, basically how this is going to work is, um, let's say MTH produces uh, streamlined passenger cars for uh, Atlas steam or diesel engine. Well, those passenger cars will be branded as Atlas cars. Uh, now, this is just how I'm reading it on the website. So, um, so you'll have uh, cars made by MTH to complement Atlas engine, and the whole deal will be branded as Atlas. Now, on the flip side, if Atlas produces rolling stock to complement an MTH engine, those Atlas cars will then be branded as MTH cars. Um, so th this is quite an interesting uh, development here. Uh, I believe this was announced back in October uh, from what I read. So um, so th this is going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. Uh, it, it, uh, it may be a sign that some of these uh, other O-scale companies are kind of starting to join forces. Uh, or it may be a sign that some of uh, these uh, other OCL companies may be deciding to join forces to better take on Lionel um, to be more competitive with them. Um, so uh, that it's it's going to be really interesting to see how this uh, whole uh, shared tooling asset agreement uh, 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 plays out between Atlas and MTH. Uh, uh, it 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 shows that they're they're wanting. Both companies are trying to be a player in the in the uh, O scale market. So now, whether this blooms into a full on merger between the two companies, it's unlikely. But uh, uh, you never know. But uh, but yeah, this uh, th this is a uh, this is an interesting uh, turn of events here for O scalers. Uh, um, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what becomes of this. So that's our uh, number two story. Um, Atlas and MTH announce a shared tooling agreement. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see what happens in 2024. So, yeah, stay tuned, O-Scalers. Uh, you may be fixing to have some real serious options here to play with. So, um, yeah. So, all right, that's our number two story. Um, we got one left, number one, and what tops this? Uh, what tops this story? I'm telling you, it's really something else, uh, and it's from a company I never would have. I personally never would have thought I would try this, but uh, it's it's going to be a wild one. So, but first, we got a couple honorable mentions to talk about. So, 
let's go right into it. Honorable mentions that just barely missed the list. Okay, we're uh, getting ready to do our number one story, but uh, first we got a couple honorable mentions. Uh, had a couple of uh, pretty surprising locomotive announcements uh, from uh, two companies in particular. Uh, one is Bachman, one is Atlas. So, um, so yeah, this uh, I uh, I personally did not expect this from either either company, but it's rather interesting. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get the Bachman one out of the way. Um, they have announced a C36-7, not a C30-7, but the uh, 3600 horsepower, I guess, twin of the C30, which is a uh, C36-7. So, uh, yeah, I, I did not expect Bachman to make an engine like this. Um, uh, we... We know that Aurora Miniatures has announced one. We don't know when that engine is coming because we have not heard anything else about that. Uh, they also have a C30-7 coming as well at some point. But um, um, So yeah, um, Botman becoming the third player in the 6-axle second gen uh, Dash 7 uh, locomotive uh, area. Uh, did not see that coming. Uh, of course, for years they've had, I think it was the B36, uh, or no, that was U36B they had. Uh, so, yeah, them announcing the C36-7, uh, that was pretty surprising. And uh, they got several row names. They got CSX, UP, uh, Norfolk, and Western, and I believe Missouri Pacific is also in there. Um I think those are the four road names I can remember off the top of my head. There may be a couple others too, but uh, um, but yeah, uh, those were the four big ones, big road names. Uh, so um, yeah, did not see that one coming. But the one that really took the cake was the one Athern announced at uh, at a recent train show, which was the uh, NMRA show. Um, uh, I believe it was a uh, back uh, during the summer. So. Uh, so what they have announced, what Atherton has announced for their next Genesis engine uh, is the RX 500 AC industrial switcher. So yeah, th this was something nobody saw coming. Um, uh, th this is pretty wild to get a switcher like this on a, and especially a, a fairly new switcher, new, new to the uh, industry type uh, industrial switcher. So. Um, it's a pretty interesting model that they're, uh, that they're coming out with. I'm interested to see how this, how this locomotive sells. Um, I figure a lot of people that do a uh, modern shelf, uh, switching layouts are going to be very happy about this. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, pretty interesting, uh, announcement from Atherton. Um. It's going to be interesting to see how well this uh, this model is received once it uh, hits uh, store shelves. So, yeah, those are the honorable mentions. Now it's time to go to number one. Number one, Broadway Limited Imports announces the HO scale all diecast metal EMD SD70 Ace. All right, so finally we're at number one. And our number one story of model rearing 2023, or at least on my list, is BLI announcing an all die cast metal SD seventy Ace? Now this thing, from what I under, from what I've heard and read on this, this thing is nuts. It's going to have an all die cast body. Um, you know, it's and they're going to offer it as a sound equipped or a DCC sound ready engine, which is big because uh, uh, it actually gives people a chance to buy a buy the locomotive and put in their own sound decoders that aren't really fans of the Paragon 4 or the uh, BLI sound system. They can put their own sound in there. So that's big that BLI is offering DCC ready engines again. So, but just on the model itself, um, this, this thing is going to be all die cast from the rails up. So, uh, from what I have read and seen, uh, from the people talking about this engine, this could very well be the heaviest HO scale diesel engine 
quite possibly ever produced. Um, uh, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, when they announced this engine on train on uh, Train World's website, the locomotive was going to weigh in excess of three pounds. Now, to give you some idea of how heavy this engine is, that would be the equivalent of two of these engines is what we're looking at. Because I think these weigh about a pound and a half um, as far as the scale trains models. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's going to be absolutely bonkers. You're talking about literally doubling the weight of a standard HO scale engine. Um, so... I mean, it, that, that's just going to be wild. Of course, they're going to have uh, BNSF, uh, uh, Montana Rail Inc., uh, the UP Heritage Schemes, as well as, I believe, the standard UP scheme, uh, Norfolk Southern, as well as a couple of uh, heritage schemes from that road as well, um, So and, and CSX, of course. So, um, yeah, that is that is going to be wild. I mean... <laughs> To, to think about an all die cast locomotive. Now, we've seen die cast engines before. I mean, uh, uh, Model Power famously had their uh, uh, metal train set. Of course, those were like geared towards younger modelers and kids, so they weren't like super detailed uh, locomotives and freight cars. Uh, they were just basically starter sets for, you know, kids to get in the hobby with that were durable. So, um, which, you know, uh, when I did the review, I did a, a retro review on that set here quite a while back. So, um, so yeah, and then, uh, of course, Lionel had some uh, die-cast metal steam engines. Uh, um, their uh, Challenger was die-cast metal, I believe. Uh, also, they have a uh, Berkshire that's also die-cast. I'm not 100% certain on that one. I can't remember if that one's a die-cast engine or not. But, uh, yeah, Lionel has kind of dabbled into the die-cast stuff. But we really haven't seen an engine to the level of, of detail that we have in these models now done in die-cast. So, um, yeah, that's, that's going to be really interesting to, uh, to see how that, uh, how that model turns out. Um, I know it's really piqued my interest. So, um, yeah. It's going to be something. Uh, 2024 is going to be a pretty big year. So, um, all right, guys. That'll take a look at our uh, top five news stories of 2023. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Happy New Year, guys. We'll catch you guys in 2024. Let's see what happens. Take care, all. Bye for now.